Well, here we are. It's the 15th day of September. We're out here at the food plots. This is actually sort of the opening day of archery season or hunting season in some aspects. The inner city hunt starts. Some of the handicaps and the youth season start uh, this Saturday morning. Beautiful morning. And if you had planted a food plot on the 11th of August, we'll go around and see what we got, have in, re, in our uh, returns on our labor. So, uh, just follow me around and we'll uh, discuss some of these food plots and where they're at. Uh, they've been growing for roughly 34 days, and the one right behind us has been growing for 32 days. So, uh, we'll see what kind of growth we have. And uh, keep in mind, we only had minimum amount of rain down here in Clark County, uh, two inches at the most. And uh, so it's been really, really dry and it's been really trying on some of these food plots. But uh, we'll take a walk around and see what we got. This plot right here was planted on the 13th of uh, August. Uh, it was two days later than we planted the first ones. This is tall tine tubers and sweet bulbs. Uh, we put a bl blend in here and they really took off. Now this would be approximately 32 days of growth. And uh, we, you see our baskets that we installed. Uh, there's been very little grazing on this plot, which is a good thing. And uh, later on I'll show you why. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's up, it's green, looking really good. It, uh, 32 days of growth with tall tine tubers and sweet bulbs and sweet uh, winter peas by uh, Biologic. Yeah, the beans are starting to yellow down now. And uh, it's about, you know, they're in, we planted them on Mother's Day, which I think, believe was the 15th of uh, May. So, uh, 15th of May, April, June, July, August, September. That's five months uh, that they've been out there, so it's time for them to yellow down. Coming up here on a rather large food plot, and this, these uh, cultivators that you're looking at are uh, tall tine tubers by um, Whitetail Institute. And they're doing fair, but they're not doing as good as they should be doing because just the total lack of rain. And Monday it was 96 degrees. I believe that was like the 10th or 11th of September. And everything's been stressed to the max. We had a half inch rain down here the other day, uh, Wednesday, but that's not near enough. These tall tine tubers should be a lot taller. But uh, that's just the way it goes. Now, here's an interesting fact right here. You look down here and you can see all these acorns. Now, that's a good thing. Remember in the last video I showed you that they were coming on and they really did. I mean, the deer have been grazing on these immensely. They're just a real good acorn crop, even when it was that dry. But, uh, and that's keeping the deer off of your uh, food plots. But I, I learned one thing with this canopy hanging over this food plot right here. I'm getting a lot of uh, oh, traffic on this area, on this food plot area, simply because the deer are foraging off of the fallen acorns. And you can see they're, they're intertwined all in there with my tall tine tubers. So when the deer come out to eat them, naturally they step all over the tall tine tubers. So I learned something, you're always learning something, and that was something I learned. You want to keep those away from the canopy, that way you won't have that uh, foraging and on top of your uh, new growth. That uh, really look, makes it look pretty, sets it back quite a bit. But, uh, and as you can see, we walk over here, you can see in the basket, that, that was the purpose of that basket. That kept all the activity out of there. So you're going to get a true reading now on how much grazing and how high your 
uh, food plot actually got. But right now I'm getting a lot of a lot of pawing and stuff in here uh, as the deer are eating the acorns. There's some fresh dung there, oh, probably in the last couple of days or so. And uh, so uh, keep your food plots away from the canopy. All in all, though, they're doing pretty good for, like I say, for as little rain as we had. And as, you, you, as I pan over here, you can see the difference in coloration. That's where you want to plant a couple different blends. So if one goes south on you, the other one may st still establish itself. Uh, those right down in there are a blend of no plow that I put up through there. And they're a different Baraska. And they're doing pretty good also. But they're doing as good as it can be doing with the rain. But th this... this, this plot right here is 34 days old and there's a good eight inches of, of growth out there that uh, but like I say the acorns on this field and this, this acorn tree are just I mean, it's just phenomenal how much acorns were dropped off this tree keep in mind uh, a real fundamental thing about whitetail they really prefer to live on the edge so the more edge that you can create, the better the habitat's going to be to attract the white-tailed deer. And in this case, we've got quite a few different edges, and I'll pan around here and show you what I'm talking about by edge. In the foreground back there, in the foreground you're going to see the corn, then you're going to see the beans. That's an edge. That's a difference in vegetation edge. And you pan on over, so that's one edge. You're going to pan over and you're going to see the timber. That's the second edge. So now you've got three edges. You've got an open field with the soybeans on it. You've got a tall field back there with the corn that can give sanctuary. And you've got the timber, which can produce, like I said, numerous, numerous tons of forage just by looking at the ground on here with all these acorns down there. That's a natural, that's the deer's natural uh, food plot. These uh, acorns were here b before man. You know, I mean, what I'm trying to say, that was one of the natural food sources uh, for white-tailed deer and turkey. And then as you pan around, we got another edge when we created this food plot. So we got a, an edge with the food plot, we got the beans, we got the corn, and we got naturally we got the timber. There's like four different edges going here, so it gives it, gives it a real, real enhanced uh, variety of different types of edge. Some crops are coming on, like I told you earlier. Some of these guys are out setting tree stands. Now, if, you had, if you're setting tree stands on, on a bean field or something like that, and you have this massive drop of, of your acorn crop back in the woods, well, the deer are going to be back in the woods eating these acorns. We could care less about those old soybeans. They've been munching on them all summer. And they're not going to come into play until they actually get cold and dried out. It's, uh, so edge is a big, big important thing. So keep that in mind. more edge you can create, the better the habitat. This end was, I swept across here with some no plow. And they really took off really good. But keep in mind, as you see, you, all these acorns but right up to these cultivators or barascas and there's just thousands, millions of acorns. I can't believe that many acorns fell on such a dry year. There weren't that many there last year, but that's going to change your whole schematic of deer movement. And that's why I say some guys jump in the conclusion they start setting tree stands up on what they did last year. And last year was last year, not this year. With that acorns being dropped like that, and crop rotation changing. That's why I would never, you'll never see me set one of those tower blinds up on a field and just say, well, that's where I'm hunting because I killed a big buck there. That's, that's foolish. You're not hunting out of one of those. You're just sitting there to kill something. Hunting is when you get out, research your property, see the deer movement, and keep on top of things, then set up in front of them. Not just going to the same generic field, 
sitting there expecting the same generic results year after year. That's what I call killing. And killing and hunting are two different uh, words and they have two different meanings. When you create different habitats like that, it's going to change the movement of animals. And, you, you know, if you, just because you put a tower blind up on a field and spent $1,000 for it doesn't mean you're going to have any luck on it. But I guess people are looking for uh, an easy way to kill something. I don't understand that. See, we've got pretty good growth on these turnips. Now, some of those turnips, like, they're getting to be a good 8 to 10 inches tall in there. And the nice thing about it, when you get them in this transition zone, as long as it doesn't frost, you're all right. But they get watered every night with that humidity. It's like drip irrigation, and it, it really revives them. And uh, so they're drawing off that moisture. And it's a real, I don't know if you can see that in the back, but there's all moisture right there in that white spot. That's just covered with moisture. So that's your rain, high humidities. And that's, a, like I say, a drip irrigation situation, which has no erosion, just uh, gives them a, a lot of water. Not a lot, but enough to uh, make them grow. Uh, it'd be nice to have more rain, this, though. This particular spot right here, we didn't have very good germination, so a couple days ago, prior to the rain, we uh, re reseeded this with some rye. And we got some rain on it, and maybe it'll germinate, and yeah, hopefully, but, uh, you know, you, you got to go sort of overseed some of your areas, because it, it just wasn't going, but uh, in general, it got pretty good growth. It just, you know, it, rain makes grain, and without rain, you really struggle on these food plots, but here again, this was a no-plow area, and some sweet peas in here, winter peas, really took off. Uh, we cleared this particular half acre there this spring, so this ground had never had a cultivated crop on it before. And uh, it's doing pretty good. I mean, it, everything could use more rain. And as you can see, there's the basket. Uh, that's why you put those there again. Everything's growing on the outside, getting very little grazing on it right now, which you actually want because you want this to get taller and m make more tons of forage. And eventually when the frost hits it, it'll sweeten it up and then they'll get on, you know, with the grazing, which is a good thing. You want that to coincide with the hunting season, which should fall first of October, two weeks from now. And, uh, you know, you don't want it to come on any none too soon. It, uh, it did a good, it did a real good germination on that. Beautiful green. That's 30, 34 days old. Yeah, 34 days old. So, if you had planted that in hopes of hunting the youth season, you would have had a green field to hunt over. Okay, this plot that we're on now, we cleared this this spring. It was heavily timbered. We planted this with uh, green patch, biologic green patch. That biologic green patch is heavily endowed with clovers and uh, rye and in my opinion it, it didn't do what I wanted. It, it uh, was probably the poorest germination of the stuff I planted. But there again, keep in mind, I always state that you want to make sure you plant several different uh, cultivators. You just don't want them to go out and plant one cultivator and here's why. I'll show you uh, here in the video. This, as you can look across there and see all these bare spots, this was a green patch, and you can see the rye grass in there, and it has some clovers. I, I don't even see any clover in there. Uh, now, I didn't get good results in this area right in here. I overseeded it a couple days ago prior to the last rain on Wednesday. And hopefully I put it in some rye and hopefully that will germinate with this moisture and fill in some of these spots. You can see some of the cultivators or the barascas that was in that uh, green patch. There was a few. Uh, that was the smallest amount of seed count they have on that package. Uh, the rye and the clovers. The clover was the highest and actually I see none of that that germinated. 
Uh, some of the rye grass came up, that tall green in there with the rye. But uh, I don't know. It, it, like I said, you want to plant a variety because over in here, we went with the winter peas and stuff on the same piece of ground. And they just blew right out of the ground. That's a beautiful, back there in the foreground, it's beautiful. But when I got out here where the green patch was, it uh, left a lot to be desired. Um, you know, I don't know. It just didn't, you know, do what I thought it would do. But in the basket, <laughs> you can see how much it grew in the basket. I mean, that's 10, 10 to 12 inches tall in that basket right there. But uh, outside of it, I don't know exactly... You know, and you don't know until germination, and hopefully that rye will come in and fill these spots in. That's my plan, anyway. And that, that's what you call green right there, folks. That really took off. And, you know, it's a roll of the dice. I like to, you know, spice it up, and I'm glad I did. I'm staying with one. But here again, <laughs> look at the acorns on the ground. It's just covered with them. It's been a real good mass crop this year and that's phenomenal as dry as it was I I didn't expect them to produce that much mass at all but that's good for the turkeys and for the white-tailed deer back in here on some of these uh, lanes you, you're gonna get germination but without the sunlight you're not gonna get it's not gonna grow all that well be lack of sunlight so you could keep in mind that if you do plant them on a trail your food plot on a trail without intense sunlight, it's not going to happen very well. Biologic really had that nailed on that. And that, that product right there is what you're looking at. Would be your winter bulbs and sugar beets. It, uh, they really took off on here. Phenomenal growth. I, I would say that's 100% germination. And they're looking really good. You notice the stumps, so we cut down the stumps to make sure it got sunlight in there. So uh, that's real critical on your food plots. Make sure they get sunlight. Hey, like I say, I'm a little disenchanted, but that's, you know, that's the name of the game. You plant it, and then it's up to Mother Nature to grow it. And sometimes she can be a B-I-T-C-H. And if you don't know how to spell, that means bitch. So, uh, like I say, really disenchanted with that, that green patch. It just didn't, it did not live up to my expectations. But there again, everything else is coming on so you still got plenty of uh, food plot now when I get down in here I can see some of that clover that's supposed to have been in that green patch but as I go up on top I don't know it didn't germinate for some reason uh, sort of on a hill not much of a hill but uh, I can see very little absolutely no clover in in this dirt up here so i don't know what the deal was but uh that's why you plant a blend now it's been reseeded with uh more uh outfitter blend which is heavy down in, in rye so that stuff should germinate this is a real good strong food plot come on really strong up through here it could use a little more sunlight in this area Back here in the back, it really, really got what it needed. We got that canopy cut off of it uh, earlier in the summer. Got those trees that were overhanging out of there. Let that sunlight get on that field, and it really took off. So, uh, lots of sunlight and lots of different blends. Well, as you can see in the background, we got green spots. And... Uh, it took a lot of work, and it took a substantial amount of money to do that. I mean, you had to buy your fertilizer, your fuel, your time off of your job, 
and the list goes on and on. But you got green, that's what you wanted. Some's a little better than others, but keep in mind it's a dr been a drought down here, so we're lucky to even have anything green. This plop in the background is uh, approximately, let's see, around 11, 34 days old, and you could be hunting off of it. That's the Drury last bite by Biologic that you're looking at behind me. Um, triple 13, lime, and a lot of time, and uh, you can have, you can create these food plots. I'm by no means an expert on food plots, but I will work hard. If it's worth doing, I'm going to give it a good go at it. And so, just don't do it haphazardly. Uh, put your heart and soul in behind it, and you too can create excellent food plots. Uh, especially if you get the right amount of rain. But keep in mind, always plant a blend and use a lot of different uh, seed. Just don't go with one because you just seen up on that last plot, uh, the green patch was, had a lot to be desired about. So that's it from the non-typical Norwalkian. Next time you see me on these food plots, I'll be hunting.